Welcome back, guys. Have you had that conversation lately with a friend or a family member? They're telling you they've got a great investment opportunity for you, and you're sat there like, go on, tell me more. This happened to me recently with my previous manager. Thanks for making that happen, guys. He was telling me that he was planning on investing a lot of money into shares into his own company that he worked for, that I worked for, no more. And when I asked him what kind of return on investment he could expect to see, he told me after a year, about 7%. So you can imagine my reaction. Damn, 7% in a year? Whew, you're killing it, man. Not quite, especially when we have a day like today, when we check the coin market cap and we can see 4.8% in the last 24 hours. And I think for some of us, it's kind of easy to overlook that. Just think, oh yeah, it's just another Bitcoin day, just another little bit of growth, you know, as per usual. But that's a lot of money. That's a huge amount of growth. That's huge for a lot of these shares. They don't get anywhere near that. 7% in a year is considered good. So this is absolutely incredible. Although this is not financial advice, just my opinion. Your capital's at risk. Be very careful with your money. And I think one of the biggest lessons we should take from this is to be like this guy. <laughs> Great advice. Now, have you guys noticed that there are more Bitcoin Cash coins as versus Bitcoin? About 11,000, not 11,000 percent, 11,000 more coins. The reason for it being that Bitcoin Cash blocks for a time were being mined really, really quickly, about one per minute at one point. So there are a lot more block rewards. Now, this is actually a bad thing for Bitcoin Cash because Bitcoin has inbuilt within it a certain period of time, a certain amount of blocks that need to be formed, after which the block reward will get cut in half. And instead of getting 12.5 Bitcoins every 10 minutes coming into existence, we only get six. This will keep happening until 21 million total and then no more. Miners will only get rewards for transaction fees, not block rewards. Now, Bitcoin Cash in this instance is further along to making this happen than Bitcoin is, quite a lot further along. If they were to get to a point where the minor reward is halved, it would be terrible news for Bitcoin Cash. Essentially, miners wouldn't be as incentivized at all to mine, and we need hash power to get transactions confirmed. So they could fork the network so that they're not as close anymore to the halvening, but that would be a fork within a fork or forkception, which I'm pretty sure is a meme. Exhibit is here. <laughs> There is a fork within a fork. However, lately, Bitcoin has been suffering from high transaction fees. There are so many of these posts on Reddit at the moment. This guy's saying he's trying to send $400 worth of Bitcoin, and there's about $60 in fees for doing it. Loads of people saying this. Why are the fees so high, especially with SegWit just activating? There are a few reasons. Namely, SegWit needs more time for people to start using the new transaction method to increase capacity. And a significant amount of hash power just disappeared. It went into Bitcoin Cash. So there's that. And is Antpool actively trying to sabotage the Bitcoin network? Now, this is quite a claim that is ongoing. If you have a look at this website, Antpool accounts for 14% of the current hash rate distribution. So this is a very big player. And if we have a look at this block that was mined, as you can see on the main chain by Antpool and was essentially empty. And this wasn't the only one, but as you can see, they were unable to claim the reward because of the block being empty. So this cost them money, cost them quite a bit of money. But it wasn't the only one. If you have a look at this website, you can see loads of empty blocks being mined. Now this is causing transaction delays. It's causing high fees. And the network just isn't a nice place today, at least. So this begs a question, why would Antpool actively do this? They're losing out on money, so it doesn't really make sense. The theory is that because of a lot of their hash power going towards Bitcoin Cash, and when Bitcoin Cash blocks were being formed so quickly, a lot of coins were generated, they're sitting on a lot of them. The idea continues that if they're able to increase the value of Bitcoin Cash, they would make millions and millions, if not billions off it. Whether or not this is true or whether it was just some sort of system malfunction that caused them to mine empty blocks, I don't know. It seems very suspicious though. And if things continue as they are with the low hash rate power behind Bitcoin, the high transaction fees, the difficulty adjustment wouldn't happen until around September 10th, after which we might expect to see 
better transaction fees, by that I mean lower. Now having a look at the rest of the market, we see Litecoin still above 50. Monero struggling to reach 100. There's probably a sell wall, as you can see here, that's kind of bumping its head against the glass ceiling, trying to break through that sell wall. Must be quite significant. BitConnect way down. Rumors of a hack that went twofold. One, the hacker stole BitConnect tokens, immediately dumped them on the exchanges, causing that price decline. And then also hacking the website so that donators of Bitcoin didn't actually donate to the BitConnect team. It went to the hacker's address. Scary stuff. As for the rest, less continually rising. Just look at that. Straight up. No limit coin. One of the biggest gainers. No surprise there. Just wait till the new UI comes out when NFL comes out. Peercoin up 20%. Peercoin's claim to fame is that they're the world's first proof of stake coin, just being an eco friendly one fair distribution, energy efficient, stable. Essentially though, it's just another cryptocurrency, which we've got a lot of. The Vertcoin remaining stable at a dollar valuation after jumping almost 50% from 50 cents. And I think mainly spurred on by the fact that the atomic swap buzzword is in their roadmap and people are excited about the possibilities of Bitcoin transactions getting confirmed on other networks. And if we have a look at some of the biggest growers, we can see Rialto at the top of the list. Rialto is not a project I knew a lot about, but if we have a look at the website, we can see they're worth $40 million at the moment. And it's kind of not hard to see why. There's a lot of nice buzzwords they're hitting with this project, such as arbitrage, making money from other exchanges, market making. So they plan to connect the exchanges via the Ripple payment protocol and the AI trade bot, which would be pretty cool. You know, just make money while you sleep. But what is the coin used for is what I want to know. Why, sh why would I buy the coin? What would I use the coin for? So if we have a look at the white paper and we scroll down and down and down and down. And here we find on page 18, token name XRL. What does it represent for a supporter? They say the token represents proof of membership, grants ownership rights to propriety software, data tools, algorithms, intellectual property. However, the token does not give the support to any kind of share or equity in any Rialto legal entities. Thus, it does not qualify as a security. So as far as I understand it, they'll say it's worth something and then immediately turn around and say it's not worth anything. Don't sue us. And this is, this is fair. A lot of ICOs have to say this. To get around US law, they have to say it's worthless. But the value proposition is that 100% of additional net value created will be distributed through Ethereum via a smart contract. Eligible for distribution are all XRL token holders on a predetermined record date. So essentially, if the company does well and you hold the coin, they will send you a certain amount of Ether depending on how well they've done. Now they don't actually plan on doing any transactions for the first three months. And then after that, after it's gathered some data, it's gonna start. Whether or not the program's gonna work, whether or not they're gonna get the AI platform working, whether or not it's gonna be any good is the biggest question. And another question is, if it's so good, why share it? <laughs> you know? Now let's take a trip down memory lane. Once upon a time, you used to be able to go to this website, fill out a capture code, and get rewarded five Bitcoin. The idea being that he wanted to spread awareness of the project back when it was still in its infancy. Other people could donate some Bitcoin so that more people could get some, get to know what it is. And also in the past, you could complain to Satoshi himself that it took you 12 hours to mine 50 Bitcoins, what's going on? And you would have got a response as well. And then you would have responded, oh, I just had internet problems. Sorry. 50 Bitcoin is $200,000. So, but would he have held? Mm. But today, Bitcoin is really helping out some individuals. Now, the, Ven the situation in Venezuela is uh, quite a desperate one for a lot of its citizens. The government just keeps on printing money, hyperinflation. The value of the Venezuelan Bolivar continues to fall. And so Bitcoin is seen as kind of a safe haven where they can buy Bitcoin and it's safe from falling any further in value for the most part. On this post, 
someone was asking, do Venezuelans actually benefit from this? And the top responder is a Venezuelan. To summarize, what he was saying was, there are some people that mine, because even though Bitcoin mining isn't that profitable in Venezuela, it would be everything you need for the essentials. And for some other people, they would buy Bitcoin and over like two weeks, instead of their money being worth any less, it's worth around the same. However, he does go on to say that most people don't yet know of Bitcoin, which is a shame. And onto the news, Vietnam is preparing to legalize Bitcoin in their country. So what does this mean? It means merchants will be able to accept and use Bitcoin as a payment method. Now, this is huge because a country like Vietnam, a country that's developing, that doesn't have too much to lose, but everything to gain by legalizing Bitcoin as a currency could see massive success. They could absolutely kill it doing this. If they have their businesses store Bitcoin instead of storing the local currency, they would just make a lot of money over time. If things continue as they have been for... <laughs> if things continue as they have been, of course. Now, I don't see Vietnam being the last country to do this, not by a long shot. However, in other news, China is looking to investigate ICOs more harshly. And I think this is good and bad. I think it's good in that it helps some ICOs that are just not actually that well established and just looking to get a quick cash grab. I think if they can police that, that's good. However, if legislation just leads to stifling of cryptocurrency adoption, stopping of startups creating their platforms, then that's a sad thing in my mind. But thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.